I want to read some of the titles from your books, and I just want to get your first memory or first thought from, you know, I don't know whether it be from writing it or reaction, um, <laughs> but I'm going to go, go through this list real quick. Uh, Song of the Stars. I was, I was thinking about Africa because I, my first Christmases were in Africa. And I was trying to think of what, how can I bring a Christmas book to life? And it was, I was in Africa surrounded by wild animals. And then the next thought was, these animals have no argument with their maker, but we do as human beings. And when the first, when the Lord came the first time at Christmas, the animals, they probably knew. Just like we're told, all of creation is longing. And the psalm, the psalm mm -hmm. tells us that all of heavens declare. I thought, well, we didn't know, but did they know? And that's where that book came from. The story of God's love for you. The story of God's love for you. I, I think it was thinking of the people I know in my life who don't know that God loves them, who think they know what the Bible's about, but they don't. Mm -hmm. wow. Poor Doreen, a fishy tale. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's that book. I didn't want her to be in my book. I wanted to write a book about her. I love that. I love that poor Doreen has now taken over this show. She, <laughs> she took over that book. She, I was wanting to write a very beautiful, lyrical story about a riverbank and birds and fish. And suddenly, halfway th like two pages in, this large fish came in and started chatting. And I was like, no, it's not your story. I'm not going to write that. <laughs> but the trouble was, the book only came alive when she came in. So I had to follow in her wake. And I think the reason I tell that story is because that's how stories work. You can't mm. control them. You kind of, you're serving the story and you have to get out of the way. And so Doreen led the way. <laughs> <laughs> Last one, thoughts to make your heart sing. Well, I wrote that one for my niece because mm. she was a very vivacious little girl when she was about seven. For instance, when she was, when she was about four, she called me and said, Sally, I want to be an op opera singer. And I went, oh, Emily, how lovely. And she went, what is an opera singer? <laughs> <laughs> so she was that kind of little girl. Nothing stopped her. And then one, almost overnight, she went very quiet. And later we found out she was being bullied at school. Mm. And I asked her, Emily, why did you stop being you? And she, thought, she said, I thought if I stopped being me, I'd stop getting in trouble. Mm. So it broke my heart. And I thought, what has she got before she goes into school to face those bullies that are so scary? What is she reading? And she showed me, and it was it was all very well-meaning, but it wasn't helpful. It was like, we must sh be generous and share our lunch like the little boy shared his lunch. And I, I thought, well, yes, but not, what is helping her? And I thought, I want a book that will tell her what God says about her instead of what the bullies say about her. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wrote it. So, it. so it would be a book of hope for children. Yeah.